as I said, we're not going to spend a ton of time on the uses of all of our systems and place values, though. But I would like to write a bit of context here and there. Anyway, when we're talking about number bases, we can technically set any value as a number base, where what that means is when we approach that value, well, any value other than one, because that wouldn't be any counting at all, but <laughs> any natural number above one, where what that refers to is the amount we reach before we turn over to a new digit. So if we think about base two, like we mentioned, the binary, we have digits zero, one. Once you get past one, it resets, and all of our places are powers of two. In base three, we have zero, one, two. This is called ternary sometimes, where we, everything, where we have everything in terms of powers of three that are represented in each of those places. Then in base four, zero, one, two, three. Base five, up to four with powers of five. Base six is up to five. Excuse me. Base five is up to four powers of five, to be very careful about saying that. Six is up to five with powers of six. Seven up to six with powers of seven. Eight, nine, and our system at ten, where again, it's important to think about exactly what these things mean. So that like if I say 10 base 7, it's kind of a bad way to say that. This isn't actually 10. What it's referring to is a number of 7s, where because we have a second digit, that's one 7 and no 1s. So really, this would be more like 7 in our standard base 10. This is, instead of saying 10, you should think of that as 1, 0, 1, 7, 0, 1s. Similarly, if I have like 10 base, I don't know, I don't really care, 21, again, I shouldn't say 10, what I should say there is 1, 0. 1, 21, and 0, 1s. So that would be 21 base 10, and then for a slightly different but still similar example, if I had something like, I'll say it more carefully this time, 1, 2, base 4, I'm saying I have 1, 4, and 2, 1. So if I have 1, 4, and 2, 1s, that's more like 6 base 10. You can go on with other conversions than this into other bases, just that base 10 is the most natural for us to work with because it's what we have the most experience with. And in general, for any value, if we have 10 base some value b, then that's going to be b in base 10. That's what it always recognizes, is one amount of the base. Not simple, but it is at least somewhat understandable in that way. Where in general, if we want to do any sort of conversion, if we want to go from any value to base 10, the one we're most familiar with, there's a pretty repeated process we can follow, where what we want to do is find the place value for each of the numerals. So something like we did here, where we're seeing like how many of each of the base, each of the digits represents, and identify those powers. Then we're going to multiply each of those place values by the digits in the place value. So like in this one here, we had one four, so one times four, and two ones, two times one, then add them up. I actually did this with that binary example before, and with those other conversions before, we just didn't couch that in being something in terms of, what I call that, base conversions. We talked about it in terms of system conversions, but it had the exact same meaning because it's the same family of systems to work with. So, let's take a look at a couple of quick examples. So for our first example, we want to convert 300, excuse me, not 327, but 327, base 8, to base 10. So, if we want to start from the right, we have to understand that when we're looking at the value 327, base 8, 3, 2, 7, base 8. That one 
in the leftmost position will refer to 8 squared. This one will refer to 8 to the first powers. And that one there will be 8 to the 0 or single digits. As again, base 8, these are all powers of 8, starting from the right, 0, 1, 2. Or, if you're confident, 2, 1, 0. From there, we want to actually be able to get our values. We want to actually be able to make this conversion. Well, we have in there 3 8 squareds plus 2 8 to the firsts plus 7 8 to the zeros, which ends up being 3 times 64 plus 2 times 8. And I'm sorry about my handwriting. I usually apologize for this earlier, but, well, bleh. sometimes even I forget until I actually start to look at it. Then 7 times 1. Anyway, what we're going to end up with here when you multiply these together and add will be 192, 16, and 7 for a total of 215 in base 10, where something that you can just it's kind of bear in mind, it doesn't, it doesn't quite work this way, you have to be careful thinking about it, is that if you're going from a smaller base to a larger one, and you just don't think about these in terms of their basis, it will look like you're making the number smaller. And then if you're going from a bigger base and going down, it will look like you're making the number bigger, kind of. When we're talking about base 10, it causes other issues that we'll see with our next example. But anyway, this is how that works for this conversion and really any conversion where, just for the sake of context, octal, as base 8 is sometimes called, for one, has use in computer science because going from 2 to 8 is a nice conversion. And it was also used by certain indigenous American populations. For example, there were some in Mesoamerica who did their counting based on the knuckles of their hands. So that had 8, hence base 8, as well as the Yuki people of what is today's Northern California, who counted, instead of being based on the knuckles or the fingers, by the gaps between fingers, where you'd also have eight options for that. But let's get one more example with a different kind of computation as well.